This is a 2003 Ford Expedition. Five four in it. I was having trouble out of the air conditioner not cooling in the front. But the auxiliary was working. Then it started working intermittently. And this line here was getting cold. And the cold was stopping right at this T on the low side. It was just lines going into the front are lukewarm. And when the sometimes the back worked, sometimes it didn't. The low pressure side was a little low, and then the compressor was cycling on and off. When they when the back one that was still running on would act up. The high pressure would only spike about ten pounds and the compressor would shut off. And the low side was down to about 15 pounds. So I expect the TXV valve is stuck closed on them. If the compressor can't pull free on in, it can't compress it out. So I'm thinking uh, it would just run long enough to pull, start pulling almost a vacuum on the line before the switch shut it off. And then I didn't get no high pressure boost. So anyway, to get the TXV valve out of the front, now I already run a diagnostic on the controls, and like I say, pretty much the refrigerant line, this refrigerant line was staying lukewarm, and it had enough Freon in it, so, and the compressor was working, and when it did work, the pressures were good on it, just running off the auxiliary, when the back don't work, then the pressure's aren't very high and the low side almost goes like say about 10-15 pounds and then it shuts off because of this switch here I expect on this TXV valve but I had to take the engine computer off of it this bracket and unplug it first thing I did was unplug the battery then I pulled the computer off this mounting bracket and pulled all the plug-ins off of it. Now I'm taking this mounting bracket off and I'm going to take the battery. I took the battery hold down has a 10 millimeter holding it. battery in the tray. I'm going to pull the battery up out of the way to get some more room back to this TXV valve. Since I'm having trouble out of the air conditioner I think it's the TXV. Yeah, i got to hook the lines up to it. Get the Freon out of it. I went ahead and recovered the Freon out of it. So all I gotta do is take it apart. There, there is some pretty high pressure on it. So the Freon needs to be drained out of the system before you start taking any of the air conditioner lines apart or you get hosed down with refrigerant and oil dye and that's generally not good for the atmosphere. I'll be make a reference to the TXV. There's another name is expansion valve. So expansion valve and TXV is the same thing. That's that's it right there. That's a new TXV or expansion valve. Thermal expansion valve TXV. This mounting bracket has three 10 millimeter bolts in it. I got the ECM bracket off. Looks like I'm getting down into where I need to be now. That's the TXV valve there. It regulates the refrigerant going into the evaporator. It looks like it's got a low pressure switch wires are clipped on the bottom of it couple fittings and then it's mounted on the side with some 10 millimeters it's holding the block on there's a 10 millimeter right in the middle there I'm gonna take that 10 millimeter out after I break these lines loose and probably get that clip holding the wires up off
clamp some vice grips on the edge of the TXV block part. Uh, whatever you do if you're installing a new one, don't hit that disc on top with the vice grips in any way. Damage it or it won't function properly. The, the top line nut is a 7 8 fits real good. And the bottom's a 19 millimeter or 3 quarter. Will fit it good. And then there's a uh, like a T25 Torx bit holding the wire harness to the bottom of it. And uh, some other plastic plug in. When you take that Torx bit off, this is holding it, holding that temperature probe down, thermocouple, whatever you want to call it. And this clamps on the back side of it, underneath of the, the little white plastic wire holder. temperatures thermocouple that has uh, grease on it special grease on it to transmit the heat and it has to be reapplied to this needle in the new one it's a white grease now the end of the block has a 10 millimeter holding both of these lines through a block to this block with the TXV in it and take it loose. The middle one. Now I need to get my new one ready with new O rings. O rings got to be replaced on it every time you take it apart I'm gonna go ahead and take these fittings loose before I take the line block 10 millimeter bolt out of the line block on the incoming lines because it's holding this expansion valve TXV whatever you want to call it to these lines Get this 10 millimeter bolt down the middle of the other two. Okay, I'm taking this center 10 millimeter bolt loose to cut the line block off. There it is. I'm going to take that 13 millimeter loose on the TXV bracket so I can pull it back away from the lines. Got O ring here and there. Too much oil in it, looks like, dripping out of it. And you really want to get this changed as fast as possible to keep moisture intrusion from getting in the system. Alright, this new expansion valve came with grease already in the thermocouple probe hole. and new o-rings whatever you do keep this stuff absolutely clean uh, these o-rings need to be coated with PAG oil before they're installed uh, 
this is where the low pressure switch goes. It'll have to be removed out of the block on that one. Yeah, I, I've tried to blow through the other expansion valve. It stopped up where this one lets air get through it. The other side won't let anything through, so it's definitely stuck. Now I need to put this pressure switch in, this crescent wrench, and this plug, this cap plug has has an O-ring on it, and I'll change the O-ring on it. Worst case, if you don't have any PAG oil to right viscosity or whatever, not that it'll matter on the O-rings, but you can get some oil off the old TXV valve and put it on the new O-rings, as long as it's clean. New oil is installed on no rings. Now I just got to switch the line no rings. Oil them up. PAG oil. All right, the new rings are oiled up and stuck on the lines in the block. Now I just got to fish it back in there. The new the pressure switch is installed. Why not damage your O-rings? Go ahead and get these nuts started. Okay, I got all the line fasteners hand tight. The two low pressure and high pressure line nuts and the 10 millimeter holding the line block to the expansion valve. It's snug down. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten the retaining bracket nuts back up and bolts. The 13 millimeter and the 10 millimeter is 5 sixteenths. Uh, a half, half deep well is getting down to that 13 good. This, all the bolts are tight holding the lines and the support bracket and both nuts are tight. Now it's time to put a thermal couple back in. It's hole down there. Put the torx bit back in. And plug this low pressure switch in. Here's a thermal couple. Here's the wire with the torx bit still in it. Two hands to do this. Remember the plastic. Cover holds that thermal couple in. Uh -huh. This new expansion valve came with thermal grease already in the hole for the thermal couple, so that's good. Yeah, I got pieces back in place. It wasn't real bad. Just have your torx bit ready. Now just put your computer. Mounting bracket back on the computer, put the battery and the hold down back on, and put the cables back on, tighten it up. And pull vacuum on the system. And this one takes, with auxiliary, takes 54 ounces of Freon. Looks like it's got plenty of oil in it. And that should get him back up and running. It's all back together. Yep, this shiny piece is it down in there. Now I'll pull a vacuum on the system for a few minutes. And tomorrow I'll pull finish the vacuum and uh, put 54 ounces of Freon in it. And I hook the lines up and pull vacuum on the system and fill it full of Freon. This is a high side port and that's a low side port. Good. 